What up? It's your boy T Ray on Reaction. Today's Films Friday. Now it's time for the meat and potatoes. Films Friday with the Films Friday with the Dead Meat Kill Count Reaction. So, we are back at the polls. And this past poll, we had two polls. One, we're going to do the, take care of the uh, the polls for today. Tonight, for the polls for this uh, tonight's uh, inf nice uh, reaction video right here. This is the Dead Meat Kill Counts right here. And in the end of the day, we'll reveal the winner of another poll but other than that we had a new poll we had a poll entry we had, which include three new entries and some changes has been made one of them being um one replacing the kill count one replacing lose count and one replacing a uh, pick that we had to the, to the franchise and that was to me and that was in it being the chucky series as well too the chucky series as will be added to to uh as uh it be added to the upcoming at the currently uh Child's Play Recount uh, series. But other than that, so that being said, it was Gentry's word. Don't Breathe 2 and Mayhem. Pay with Mayhem. Would you rather pay with Happy Death Day to you? Scary Story Tell and some returning ones such as Scary Story Telling Dog Pay with Mountain Mass, Husk uh, with Home Sweet Home, and Blood Quad on with Wood Creek. And the results are. With the majority, with the majority of fifty nine percent, the when the pair was Would You Rather and Happy Death Day to You, while the losing pair was Hush and Home Sweet Home, and let's get to the losing pair first. So the losing pair was Home Sweet Home and Hush, and which one was going to be saved? And it looks like Home Sweet Home be saved, and unfortunately Hush will return to the the Redemption Pole Gulag as the, the final entry in the. This should poll so next the week after I do the return of the I do the official new uh, uh, franchise series the return should poll will be the next poll after that so anyway now let's get into the winning duel between would you rather and happy death day to you as a lot of folks there's a good amount one in one not the other and one over the other foresee the other got over as Happy Death Day to you wins by 70% with Would You Rather only with 30, 30%. So Would You Rather we return to the poll once I return back to the official poll. As you know, it's going to be a couple of while as um, this next poll, the poll after that is the Redemption Poll. So anyway, other than that, let's get into Happy Death Day to you. Uh, a sequel, I, sequel to a reaction uh, kill account I did not too long ago with the original Happy Death Day, which was very interesting as well too. And as well also did the day... They talk with the Happy Death Day as well, too, powered by Zorin. So, other than that, let's get into Happy Death Day to You, the sequel, which came out in 2019. And um, without further ado, let's check it out. Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Happy Death Day to You, our first 2019 film on The Kill Count. Happy Death Day to You is the sequel to 2017's genre-bending Happy Death Day. And, true to that film's spirit, the sequel is even less of a straight horror film than the first one. There are still a bunch of kills, integral to the plot of a single day repeating itself, but there's also a whole new sci-fi angle that attempts to explain the mechanics of the first movie. Normally, I hate it when things are over-explained, and I think the first movie functions just fine without any kind of answer as to why Tree had to relive her birthday over and over again. But this sequel mostly pulls it off while successfully building out the world of the first movie. I will admit that the complications surrounding the new sci-fi plot device make for a much messier movie than the tightly scripted original, but it's still a treat to watch these two films back-to-back, -back, thanks to returning writer-director Christopher Landon and the efforts he took to make them feel like one seamless experience. Happy Death Day to You was filmed a year and a half after they had finished shooting the first one, but since it's supposed to take place partially on the same day, the crew had to go all out recreating locations and casting the same people, even for minor characters and featured extras. To really appreciate mm. how much they matched everything to the first film, and because I've got to plug my own shit, I recommend you rewatch The Kill Count for Happy Death Day if it's been a while since you've seen the movie. I rewatched the episode myself, and I'm happy to say I still think it's a great Kill Count script, even though my narration is somehow both rushed and unenthusiastic at the same time. Come on, past James, get it together. How many people? This is people. This is the reason why he's doing a lot of kill costs some of his earlier work, such as he did with Friday Thirteen, which is actually his first work series, and the Child's Play. I think I was like, might have been his second one. I could, I could be wrong. But yeah, that's why he's been doing a lot of recounts as well too, because of that.
people will die in this sequel? And how many new tree puns can I come up with while I count them? Let's find out and get to the kills. The movie begins with the bell tower the ringing. <laughs> Ryan Fan, Mr. Fine Vagine himself, wakes up in his car and makes his way back to the dorm, passing a snippy dog, a change-seeking bush dweller, and an intern on wheels in the process. Once again, these and other oddly specific things are there for us to re-experience when the inevitable time loop starts up again. Ryan gets to his dorm room and walks straight into the ending of the first movie, line for line. I'm not seeing my car again. It smells like hot pockets and feed. Get out! I just want to clean underwear! Here's a perfect example, actually. Just compare that to the same scene from the end of the original, and see how well they recreated it. I'm not sleeping in my car again. It smells like hot pockets and feet. Get out. I just want clean underwear. But unlike in the original, when that scene ended with a push-in on a bumper sticker and a cut to credits, this movie continues, with Ryan going to the school's quantum mechanics lab. There, he and his nerd squad of new characters, Samar and Dre, are fucking with some heavy-looking super science shit. Their machine, apparently, had some kind of high-energy output the day before. Uh, yesterday, 12 1 a.m. Meaning it's probably the cause Super of Tree's sweet. repetitive growth cycle in the first movie. But Dean Bronson, another new character, is sick of the blackouts and lack of results coming from Ryan's quantum thesis project. Consider this joke of a project. Tell me, that, that girl from Happy Dev Days, that, that girl from, from, from Superman, I think she might have said, I think they might have said where she came from. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. She's on, she got, yeah. Chainsaw Massacre, that's what it's at. That's who that is. The Chainsaw Massacre, that's, yeah, that's what I thought. I think he did say, I think he did mention that. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. I think he did mention that before. But yeah, uh, the one guy, Got at the end, y'all. Oh man. Just suspended effective immediately. What? Ryan pouts on the couch and gets a real creepy picture texted to him, and he follows this digital peeping Tom trail into a chemistry lab, where his inspection of a closet leads to death via baby face. Oh he no! Stabs him in the chest. Like the original, this movie is PG-13, so don't expect a lot of gore. But hey, at least we got an impact shot. Ryan wakes up in his car, and you already know what to expect here: hyper hound, uh -oh. shrubbery shrub, skateboard and coffee boy. This movie knows you know what it's all about, but it'll. Run through the familiar fast enough. Don't so worry. In fact, decides. right away, oh, when wondering. Ryan mentions having deja vu to Tree and Carter, they recognize that he might be barking up the same tree that she was. But when he says that he too was killed by a baby faced heel, they get confused. Tombs is dead. So is a baby faced heel like it. Glory. And who's the killer this time? I don't know. Why don't you let me watch this movie and find out? Tree gives Ryan a vignetted recap of the first movie, and with everyone all caught up, they head to Ryan's murder spot so Tree can take a whack at solving this mystery. Also, hey, Tree with a baseball bat reminds me of the kill I missed in the first movie that a few of you pointed out. Before Tree herself was splintered with a home run, she hit one of her sorority sisters, Kappa Becky, in the head just as hard with the same bat. Ooh. So, yeah, that was probably a kill. Meaning the first movie actually had 20 kills, not 19, so go ahead and make a correction in your little notebooks or whatever. I know some of you have those. They inspect the closet, but don't find any killers, baby-faced or otherwise. So Ryan introduces Tree to a science project. The Sisyphus Quantum Cooling Reactor. We call it Sissy for short. That's a fun name, since Sisyphus was the Greek mythological figure who was tasked with rolling a boulder up a hill. Every time he reached the top, it would roll back down and he'd have to start all over again. Mm. Kind of like reliving the same day repeatedly, huh? Ryan that gives a sciencey explanation about how Sissy was made to manipulate time, and Tree informs him that it worked. These mofos made a time loop. They have lunch in the cafeteria, where Tree's sorority president, Kappa Danielle, shows up to Danielle at her for missing a house meeting and hanging out with a bunch of nerds. Ew. So we've established <laughs> that she's still a meanie pants. Got it. Tree and Carter cement their new relationship status. Oh, are you my girlfriend? Kinda. As she tells Ryan, he's got a whole bunch of dying to look forward to. Hopefully he'll be better than her at keeping a kill count of all his deaths. I died 11 times. Oh yeah, Tree? Because in my video, I counted 10, so I hope you've got the receipts. In an effort to keep Ryan safe from the new babyface killer, Carter suggests that they go to a basketball game so they can have safety in numbers. But, uh, yeah, that might not be oh, the best idea. Shit. It's like hiding from Chucky in a doll factory. Oh, wait, they did that, and it was awesome. Never mind. The game gives Tree a chance to check.
check in on plot lines from the first movie, like that Tim guy's recent emergence from the closet, and the sadness she still feels over her dead mom. But then an alarm goes off, sending the student body flowing through crowded hallways, and show enough, an especially mean-looking baby starts making their way towards Ryan. Babyface eventually catches up to Ryan in the basement, but they're knocked out by Tree, and when they demask the individual, they're shocked at what they see, a second Ryan. Ryan, too, wakes up tied to a chair and tries to explain. I was trying to close the loop, but somehow I got knocked into a parallel time loop. Talk about timey-wimey. Ryan, too, says that they have to kill Ryan 1 for butterfly effect reasons, I guess? But instead, wow. Ryan 1 boots up the sissy machine and ignores his doppelganger's warning. You don't understand what you're doing! Shut up, fake Ryan! As the machine Ryan. lurches to life, Dre, Samar, Dean Bronson, and some security dudes walk in, and things go to hell in a handbasket. When Sissy finishes initializing, it releases a huge science fiction explosion that blows everyone back in super slow motion mm. while the flower duet plays. <laughs> like always. After everyone crashes, the lights go down, and we're back to a familiar scene. Bell Tower chimes, waking Tree up in Carter's bed, mm. with him greeting her a good morning, and her phone playing that awesome ringtone again. Yes, Tree is back in yesterday yet again, resulting in some understandably unbridled rage. Ryan! You dumbass! This sucks! It sucks the biggest mega balls in the history of shit ball! <laughs> Suckery! It's Although Ryan and Carter don't understand what's happening, they follow oh. Tree as she cuts through the campus and freaks out over seeing the usual activity. <laughs> but she soon learns that things aren't exactly the same. For instance, Lori and Carter appear to know each other, and Lori didn't even make a poison cupcake for Tree. Ryan surmises that maybe Tree is in a sort of multiverse situation. Although she woke up on the wow. same day, it wasn't necessarily in the same dimension, and thus the minor differences she's been noticing. Like I said, this plot might seem confusing, but a little featurette on the Blu-ray helps break it down. When Sissy misfired, it created a time loop on Monday, mm -hmm. September 18th that we saw play out in the first movie. Movie. That loop closed when Tree killed Lori, but then another loop was created, um, I'm not sure exactly how, this time for the next day. But when Ryan booted up Sissy yet again, he reset the original loop, only in a parallel dimension. That's mostly the same, but has some minor differences. Also, some major differences, like how Danielle and Carter are now a couple. This Dimensions Danielle is a bit more chill and a lot more friendly. We're doing the special needs art fair again. Even if she is still a bit of a dunce. And Frank was blind and deaf. But none of that makes Tree feel any better about losing her new boyfriend to her old frenemy. Tree excuses herself from this awkward situation and heads to that birthday lunch with her dad, where she finds another aberration in this dimension. Her mom's yeah, her mom is still alive on wow. this side of the sissy loop. That's some heavy shit right now. And as always, Jessica Roth freaking kills it in the acting department. I love how well she plays Tree across a huge range of emotions. It makes for one of the absolute best characters I've ever covered on the kill count. Seeing her mom alive again makes Tree second guess trying to get back to her own dimension, even if that would mean not having Carter as a boyfriend. I mean, yeah, he's a nice boy, but you're gonna take the not dead mom every time, man. Except, I guess it might be kinda weird crash landing in the middle of another lifetime. Mind. That night, Tree sees on the news that John Toombs is still around in this dimension, so she makes her way to the hospital to stop him from getting out and killing people. He's not in his room, though. Instead, there's just a police officer who arrests Tree for brandishing an axe at him. Come on, Tree, you should know how scary it is to have an axe waved around at you. As the cop walks her out of there, he's ambushed and attacked by oh. Babyface, who kills him with a couple of stabs to the midsection. It quickly becomes clear that this dimension's Babyface isn't Lori, since, you know, she's She's standing right, right there. there. And Lori tells Tree that she just took John Toombs to an operating room, so this baby face can't be him either. It looks like we're in for a game of Who's that baby face? Tree and Lori wind up on a hospital floor. By the way, I, I, I'm truly trying to back up my statement because I, I keep thinking that's uh, Jenny all grown up, but it's not. Okay.
are under construction to be the school's newest scare zone. And while walking the through it, Lori turns her around to reveal a knife in her belly. She dies bleeding from oh. her mouth, another victim of this dimension's mystery baby face. The Bayfield baby chases Tree with a sledgehammer all the way to the rooftop, where Tree's eagerness to get away results in another death, her own, after she falls off the edge mm. many stories to the ground below. Huh, you'd think a hospital would have safety railings around its roof. She wakes up at square one again on the same day we watched her relive in the original. But the sequel's new costume designer, Whitney Ann Adams, who I had an awesome, lengthy conversation with after a screening of this movie I went to, decided that even though Tree would be stuck repeating the same day again, she wanted to have more fun with Jessica Roth's wardrobe. <laughs> Excuse me. Got to get out of these disgusting clothes. So right. be on the lookout for Tree's 17 costume changes nice. that Whitney got to pick out for Jessica to wear. Way to help elevate the movie, Whitney. Tree tells Ryan to just close the loop so she can stay in this current dimension with her not dead mom. But the Geek Squad admits to not knowing exactly how Sissy works. In fact, they would need many days of trial and error to figure it all out. But since the same day keeps repeating itself. Right, I just want to double check. Okay, she's not Jenny. I'm, I keep thinking she's Jenny from Forrest Gump all grown up, but she's not. Okay, keep thinking it. The little, the little kid version of Jenny. There's no way to keep track of their results. That is, unless Tree becomes a human notepad for them and is able to report back on every failure after the day resets. Even oh, though it's wow. hard sciencey stuff, Tree sees no other way. So we get ourselves another music-backed, death-filled montage. In it, Tree learns what doesn't work, and then, to avoid a painful death at the hands of a babyface killer, simply kills herself to reset the day. The first time is via oh, hair dryer the in the bathtub, which is enough to kill anyone who's not Uncle Fester. Damn, Tree, looking hot as a forest <laughs> fire there. The second self-inflicted death comes from some drain cleaner, which she drinks right there in the middle of the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, God. you're gonna want to flush your pipes after that one. They came up with the third death during reshoots for the movie. After seeing Carter and Danielle all lovey together, Tree goes skydiving without outerwear or a parachute, and somehow perfectly times her jump to green screen fall what and the hell? a couple onto yeah. the concrete. I hope she yelled timber on the way down. The fourth death also came from reshoots and makes the tree pun for me since she sprints her way into a tree chipper oh, and Lord. is turned into a fine spray of red. Also, the tree chipper's company name, Biff, is a Biff. reference to Back to the Future since earlier they had mentioned that clear influence. <laughs> Are you serious? You've never seen Back to the Future? Sorry. This montage of failure is capped off with another cool transition effect just like the first one had, with Tree falling from the top of a bell tower through time and space itself to land once again in Carter's bed. End montage. All of these deaths have left Tree feeling pretty wiltered, so she lands herself in the hospital where she's tended to by Dr. Gregory Butler, that licentious professor who, if you'll recall from the first movie, had been sleeping with both Tree and Lori. Only in this dimension, Gregory doesn't recognize Tree at all. We saw during the montage earlier that he's still been sleeping with Lori though. So when Tree tells him that Lori's about to get killed by someone in the basement, he runs off to save his student paramour. Tree escapes her room, knocks out the hospital police officer, and steals his gun to go hunting for babies. That sounds less humane than it is. But instead of a dirty baby to kill, Tree finds Lori, who's already been got. Looks like a couple of stab wounds to the chest. 53 minutes in. Call it. A baby face appears behind Tree, but a hospital mirror allows her to shoot him a couple of times. As he dies, she demasks him to find John Toombs, just as handsome as ever. Thanks for the extra kill, John. She asks Toombs who set him free, but before she can get an answer, the real babyface killer grabs her from behind. Seeing no other option, Tree decides to shoot at a tank of gas and kill both mm. herself and this dimension's babyface, giving us two more kills for the count. Tree lays out all the knowledge she's learned in her many trial runs with this experiment, and with all these failures on display, there's apparently only one remaining solution to the problem. Whatever they do works, and the system boots properly. And just in case you need it spelled out why they're so happy here, Ryan summarizes the situation. Just so we're totally clear, one variant closes the loop in this dimension, and the other one sends you back to your original dimension and closes that loop. It's final decision time. Stay here or go back. Tree tells Ryan that she's planting her roots here in this dimension, so he boots up the sissy and it fails. Why did it fail? Well, apparently, Samar got a virus on the computer by Dang. opening spam porn. Lord. Although he denies it, like you might deny <laughs> eating pieces of shit for breakfast. No. Ryan's gonna have to spend seven hours manually re-entering all that code. But instead of using that time to save Lori from Babyface at the hospital, Tree would rather just lay low and survive so she can have a happy, mom-filled life. I have to stay alive. 
I can't go back to that hospital. It's way too risky. I love this character beat for Tree. Although she grew as a person in the first film, of course her selfish tendencies are going to come out again if it means getting her mom back. I can't lose her again. It's great character writing like that that makes up for this movie's messy sci-fi plot. Carter also says that if Tree stays in this dimension, she'll be denying the emotional loss that helped make her who she is today. He suggests saying goodbye instead of living a lie, but Tree would rather survive and keep her mom alive. So later on, as the Quantum Quorum convenes to finish their work and boot that sissy up, Tree travels with her parents to get out of town. But while they head to a safe place, Tree's mom talks about a Cinnabon birthday experience that that Tree doesn't remember. That wasn't me. Hmm. Tree might want to rethink staying in this branch of reality. Oh look, the university's power substation. Wonder if that's important. At a motel, while watching Creature from the Black Lagoon, Tree talks to her mom about life and second chances. When her mom says that she would always choose to be with her dad, no matter how many redos she was given, Tree realizes that she wants to be with Carter. It's gonna be kinda hard to do that though, since Carter has taken it upon himself to save Lori in the hospital. And as Tree sees on the news, he joins Lori and the hospital police officer as a victim of Babyface's killing spree that night. And yeah, these kills will go on the count Dead. since they happen within the present story of this movie, even though they were off screen and only revealed to us in a news report. Since Tree doesn't want Carter dead forever, she tries calling Ryan so he can cancel Sissy's loop closing. When he doesn't answer, she runs out of the room and drives her car to that power station they passed earlier, where she's able to stop Sissy's loop closing at the very last instance by crashing into the station. Mm. Tree is killed yet again in the high-impact car crash, which also shuts down power across the entire university mm. and puts an end to Sissy's efforts. The next day, or the same day, Tree tells Ryan that she wants to go back to her original dimensions and she doesn't want to be stuck living in the past. While he gets all the science in order, Tree goes and gives this dimension's Lori a pep talk, telling her to dump the dork Dr. Gregory. More importantly, she also meets with her mom for one last conversation, wherein she says goodbye and that she loves her. Some well, I got a feeling it's either the mom or the doctor i got a feeling that's the film that's the one that's two things i ideas two films i got that's going that's the baby the true baby killer i got an idea i could be completely wrong but that's my hunch something everyone who's lost a parent would absolutely kill to do it's another tearjerker scene in this genre bending movie but thanks to the acting talent involved it works and never comes off as hokey even with the hallmark channel shot of them blowing out a candle together you're always gonna be my little girl with this dimension's loose ends tied up, Tree has the Quantum Rangers go-go power up the sissy machine <laughs> go, go, to send her back <laughs> to her own dimension. Unfortunately for her, that's when Dean Bronson shows up and shuts the whole thing down. Or it could be him! It could be Dean. Sissy is taken away to his office, and the students are left forlorn, since Tree is so weak from all of her dying that she's not even sure she'd be able to come back after another reset. This leads to something that probably no one expected going into this movie. A friggin' heist sequence, complete with a very wacky diversion for the Dean in the form of Danielle acting like a blind French foreign exchange student. It's a scene with extremely broad humor, and even though actors Rachel Matthews and Steve Zissis are giving it their all, it gets it's just a tad too silly for my tastes. Checkmate. Danielle gets Dean Bronson's keys to the others so they can sneak into his office and roll the sissy past his awesome kitty portrait. And in no time at all, they're booting that bad boy up. Since it's gonna take them a while to get it back online, Tree figures that she can still save this dimension's Lori from her babyface death. She heads to the hospital and steals the police officer's gun again, then busts into it's John Toombs' room and saves Lori by it's shooting this. Toombs to death right out of his bed. They run good. down the hall and encounter the new babyface who's been trying to kill Lori and it turns out that new baby face is Dr. Dr. Gregory I was Butler. Right. Tree lays out everything she's deduced by now. Gregory's wife, Stephanie, found out about his affair with Lori, so Gregory, like Lori in the first movie, freed Tombs and slapped a baby mask on him so the criminal would take the fall when Gregory killed Lori to save his marriage. Slow clap for figuring all that out, I Tree, but why is Gregory still smirking? You see, there's one little detail you failed to realize uh -oh. in all this. Oh, really? What's that? Me. Her? Lori is shot in the gut by Gregory's wife Stephanie, and the couple prepares oh. to dispose of Tree too, so they can clean up after his affair and keep their marriage. Whoa, okay, so I was half right, I, I was kind of half right, but good twist right there, wow. Looking strong. It's a little convoluted, but I think I've got it, wow. as long as there aren't any more twists. Oh shit! 
I want a divorce. Damn it, Gregory! What are you, man? One half of a ghost face killer couple? Carter shows up and so just. Facts. <laughs> that gave me. That definitely some shit you see on the screen. Or. Scream, scream, or the party. I'll forget the part, but scream definitely. <laughs> Extracts Gregory, who then chases Tree into an MRI room. Although he has the upper hand at first, Tree realizes where she is and turns the tables with a Jason X one-liner. You're screwed. The MRI pins Gregory mm. against the machine behind a wheelchair, and when Tree lets go of the screwdriver in her hand, it impales Gregory in the mm. gut. I'm not sure if he's like dead dead right here, but I'll put him on the count anyway. And although we see Stephanie getting wheeled away on a gurney there, I'm gonna leave her on the count too. Screw it. Lori, however, is clearly not on the count since she survived and gets ushered off for medical help. During all this, Dean Bronson figures out that he's fallen victim to a ruse, a cunning attempt to trick him, and realizes that the sissy is getting booted up again. There's some slow motion cross cutting between Dean Bronson breaking into the mm -hmm. quantum lab and Tree and Carter moving in for a kiss, all while sissy gets closer and closer to booting up and sending Tree back to her own dimension. Thanks to some strategic leg hugging by Dre, the Dean isn't able to stop Sissy in time. The machine boots up and the sparks fly, literally and figuratively, before we find ourselves back in the original dimension, sitting in the aftermath of the Sissy's initial explosion. Wait, double check your dimension tree. Danielle? Who? Jackpot. Uh, nice. The movie ends right then and there. But we do get a mid credit scene that shows our heroes picking up trash on campus mm. to make up for their science explosion. And don't judge Samar for eating that ground Ugh. churro. Cause you wouldn't waste food either if you spent 200 days Ugh. lost at sea. The students are picked up by some G-men in dark suits and dark sunglasses uh -oh. and taken to DARPA where Sissy is now held by the government. But in oh, order to make the machine work again, the G-men say they're gonna need a test subject that they can intentionally put inside a time loop. Cue this very strange ending of Danielle waking up in bed mm -hmm. screaming, possibly in the middle of her own time loop? Alrighty then. How many bodies did Babyface make like a tree and leaf lying around? Mm -hmm. Let's find out this and get to good. the numbers. This is, so, y'all, y'all actually picked a good one in this one. I know some, I know DK wanted, uh, would you rather? Shout out to DK Lounge, though, with my loyal, uh, re, loyal, uh, viewers of my uh, Kill Count reactions. Whoa, guys, I just came from another dimension where I'm Lucy's pet. What? Oh, we gotta get out of here? Okay, Lucy wants us to go do the numbers. <laughs> yes, master. If we include Stephanie, then 20 people died in Happy Death Day to you. The victims included seven men, one unknown baby face that could have been Gregory or Stephanie, and 12 women. Again, giving us the rare pie chart with more women than men, but also again, mostly because eight of those lady deaths were tree. With a runtime of 100 minutes, we had a kill on average every five minutes flat. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to the tree chipper yep. death during the montage, because I love a good pawn. It also had some blood in there, which most of these kills were lacking. Doll machete for lamest mm. kill will go to John Toombs when he got shot by tree a couple of times. Partially because that's when I was starting to get confused about what was going on. And that's it. Happy Death Day to You came out in 2019, and although it's a fine sequel, it didn't do as well at the box office as Blumhouse had hoped it would, so there may not be a third film. Until next time, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching this week's Kill Count. I want to thank- All right, here we go. The rest of it, that's a uh, happy death day to you, Joe. Shout out to y'all for doing that. So, going forward, next week, going forward, uh... Pont, uh, not Ponty. Would you rather will be uh will be paired up with Home Sweet Home and the surviving kill counts we have is Don't Breathe Mayhem Scary Story Story Storytelling in the Dark Behind the Mads Blood Quantum and Wolf Cream. As you know, Hush will be joining the will fit as the final entry of the Redemption Poll, which will come in a, the week after next week though. That and that and then that will be along with Come to Daddy. Tory Strap, Sweeney Todd, and Pony Pool. And now the reveal of the next of the next uh franchise pool. So that being said, says a lot of folks I wanted says I had one injury, one entry I wanted to put in. A lot of y'all y'all was was requesting another entry to put in, especially since it was a recount. So that being said, the um the there's two new entry and one entry got taken out since it was the lowest last time. Don't mean it's, it's completely gone. It'll be just be bench temporary bench, but we're possibly returning the next franchise pool, and that is the Dead series, which is Living Dead, Day to Dead, and the bonus as well. Two the pools that take place of um no, I'm sorry, 
Living Dead, yeah, they'll take place, uh, no, Living Day, Dawn of Dead, I'm gonna say Day of Dead is gonna replace, but anyway, um, the, the, the new entries was, well, the return entries I had was Sleepaway Camp, the last two episodes, uh, Alien Predator in chronological order, in Alien Predator put, put together in chronological order of, of the movies, not this, not this, so I won't be doing Prometheus further or anything. The Leprechaun, the Leprechaun series minus the Leprechaun Returns since I, since I did it. And so the new entry were, my original pick, my original new entry was going to be the Rex series, including Quar Quarantine 2. And the one that y'all re how requested, the Child's Play Plays Recounts, the Child's Play Chucky Recounts, which was also, was, which is the reason why the reboot is no longer in the, in the poll now. And speaking of that, the winning poll, because it was how requested, is... The child plays kill and Chucky recount, including the reboot. Now that being said, that will be next week kill count. But there's been issues going on with Child's Play recount three. Now I'm not sure what's the update of that though. But if it comes down to that time I uh, and time to do Child's Play three, let me see. Let me before I even say what I'm gonna say. Let me see if it's been taken care of. Nope, has not been taken care of yet. So right now, Child's Play 3 recount is on has been blocked by YouTube right now because of copyright. That they are they're handling it right now, even in, right now. But if the time comes and it's not ready yet, I'm gonna go straight to the reboot edit for now. If he's just not gonna do the recount anymore because of that situation, I told him that would be the end of the series to further notice. But other than that. As you see, the next another the newer kill count he has is X. I will add X to the next poll, next uh new poll going, which will be many weeks down the line though, because you know a couple of weeks after next week, um, showing my showing my secrets. The weeks after next week will be the uh, redemption poll. But other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T Bear signing off. One love.